What's up, y'all? Welcome to Gratified Grad, where it's my goal to help you graduate with gratification. My name is Leticia, and in today's video, we're going to get into some career wellness as well as some intrapersonal wellness. So we're going to blend together two areas of wellness in this quick chat that we're going to have. With that being said, let's get into it. So the topic for today's tips to being a gratified grad, I'm not sure what we're calling this series that I'm going through, but we're going to talk about the the hard truths of overcoming racism. And so I am often in spaces, well, we're not even going to start there. We're going to start with racism is prevalent. The definition of racism is going to be presented here. And so considering that it is a systemic thing, it is all around us, everyone who lives in America um, and those who have been born and raised here in America have been affected and their personality is in some way or another in response to racism. And so we talk about wanting to do better. We talk about wanting to end racism and having an equal society, equal opportunity and things like that in the workplace. Well, I feel we're still in a place where we're not even comfortable allowing people to talk about racism, about their experience with it without someone feeling uncomfortable, someone feeling like they have to play the supportive role, someone feeling like they have to play the victim. And so I just want to throw out a couple of things from my experience that comes along with having that uh, hard conversation and getting to know people for who they are and then moving forward to grow and creating a healthy relationship. So from a person of color's perspective, uh, when you're in the workplace and you are working with someone who is white, uh, I have three thoughts that build upon each other, three ideas on how we can navigate racist moments or moments where your colleague who may not be of the same background as you opens up and admits to their racist past or um, some of the racist ideology that they've grown up with. And I've been in a couple, more than a couple, of situations where I've had to navigate this. And I will say this is a comfortable way that I have come to navigate it. Obviously, things work differently for different people. So more than anything, I would like this conversation to spark your thoughts about how you can most comfortably navigate and overcome the racism that still exists, whether um, very overtly with some people or covertly with others, depending on the background and the knowledge level of the person that you're engaging with. So the first thing is being prepared to hear uncomfortable things. I'll give an example of I have a colleague where we never really got into the conversation of race. But it was one day that I was listening to her tell a story about how subconsciously she is racist and she is very well aware that subconsciously she has um, some racist um, thought process, some racist beliefs that is stemmed from her childhood. Now, hearing her talk about this makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable, or at least it did make me feel a little bit uncomfortable because I then reflected on interactions that we had, this colleague and I, and my thought was, okay, is this how she's coming? Like, is, is this thought process reflected on in her interactions with me? 
right? Have there been other situations where I've been subject to her subconscious racist beliefs and I either just let it go over my head, I didn't pay attention to it. And so giving that opportunity and that space for the non-person of color to just speak on their experiences, I think that that allows them to find more awareness. Now, I definitely understand there are some people who feel like, well, they shouldn't speak about that to me as a person of color. That's something that they handle with their um, white friends or with their therapists or whomever. I personally feel like if we are friends, colleagues, we work closely together. And when I say friends, colleagues, I am saying two separate words, right? Sometimes your friend is your colleague. Sometimes the friend, your friends are not your colleagues, right? But if it's someone who you work closely with, someone who you need to trust and build relationship with in your workspace, then being able and prepared to hear uncomfortable things can help you to develop your relationship with them. I will also add in that disrespect is not tolerated. So if they are saying it in a way that is disrespectful, then that's very different than them sharing an experience in a way of this was my realization and this is something that I'm working on. The second thing that I would caution people of color on is not going into supportive mode. So this goes along with the being prepared for it to be uncomfortable, right? So not only uncomfortable for you to hear something, but then also for the moment itself to be uncomfortable. More often than not, I find that people tend to go into supportive role or supportive mode when the situation gets uncomfortable because they then want to make it back a comfortable space. I would say that that is not the role of a person of color, especially in those types of conversations. The awkwardness, the uncomfortableness is just going to have to sit there for a moment. And I think that is how we process and that is how we develop through and understanding um, what racism does and how it exists in this um, sinister, subtle way. And the third thing that I would say is, as the person of color, if you're having this conversation, actually be a part of the conversation. Share your feelings your response in a way that facilitates dialogue between you and the person that you're talking to. So this is something that even I am still working on. In the example that I gave when we first started off in this video, I said that um, a white colleague had shared uh, how she interacts with people of color and how she has some uh, subtle racist undertones to certain things that she does. That made me feel a little uncomfortable and just kind of like, oh, wow. It started making me just rethink the interactions that I had had with her. Now, if this is someone, once again, that I'm trying to build a relationship with, that I continue to work with, it should be able to be a space where I can say, wow, that actually made me uncomfortable. And I'm curious, how has those racist um, undertones or those racist, that racist background, how has that affected our relationship? Right. And so this, that, that question for me Um, is something that I would want to ask. And I think that that question would allow for the comfort on my end to feel like I can continue this relationship and we can grow in this moment. Now, if nobody can have either of those comfortable moments, well, we never have the hard conversation and we never get to overcome racism. 
those are just my thoughts. Um, obviously, everyone has a different way of working through their experiences. Hopefully, I gave you something to think about, something to take with you in your professional interactions, and another tool to add to your toolbox. See ya.